Here I have the very latest electric SUVs and I'm going to drive them all up the motorway to see how far they'll go on a full charge and to find out what happens when they do finally run out of electricity. Do they suddenly just conk out and leave you stranded or do you get plenty of warning? Which of these cars do you think is going to go the furthest? I've put a pinned comment down below where you can vote. Let's do this. Buy, sell, car, wow. I'm starting off in the ID Buzz. The convoy is setting off now. And we've all reset our trick computers. We're on 100% charge. It's gonna be interesting to see just how far up the motorway we get. Got a long, long journey ahead of me for sure. But is it gonna be as long as the manufacturer says it will be? Leaving the services now. Oh. <laughs> I had to pull out in front of that lorry. That's a good thing about electric cars, even big ones like this. You've got a nice bit of instant pickup to get you out of trouble. Did that thing cruise nonchalantly past the petrol station, somewhere I never need to go. Oh, look, it's got some electric charging points there by the look of it, but they're not open yet. Classic. Okay, so the first part of our journey is going to be mainly dual carriageway until we pick up the M1 and start heading north. You might be wondering why I've picked the ID Buzz first. Well, out of all of these cars, it's the one that I would want the most. I just think it looks so cool. I also like the fact that the driving position is so high. You know, everyone wants an SUV because that elevated driving position, but this isn't an SUV, it's actually an MPV. It's based on a van. Um, you've got these lovely seats with these armrests. So it's such a chilled experience for now. While I've got a full charge, it might get a little less chilled later on when it starts to run out of battery. Now I probably should tell you the rules of this challenge. We're going to drive at the speed limit until our batteries become low and when they're really low we will slow down to maximise range. As we're driving along we're going to try and keep things consistent so we're all setting our climate control to 20 degrees and we're not going to use our heated seats because it's not actually all that cold today. Another thing we're doing is putting the car in their normal driving mode so not eco and with normal regen braking. Hopefully that'll make things a bit more consistent. Anyway, let me tell you about the ID Buzz. It's got a single electric motor driving the rear wheels with 204 horsepower, and it's good for 0 to 60 in around 10 seconds, which, considering the size of it, is quick enough. It's got a 77 kilowatt hour battery pack, and that's good for a range in this particular version of 255 miles. And we'll see how close I get to that. Probably not that close. One of the great things about it is the design. I mean, it just looks so cool, and this has the upgraded two tone paint job. It's lovely on the inside as well. I mean, there are some like cheap plastics which are a little bit nasty considering the price. This thing starts at £57,000. This one, £65,000. It's a lot of money, but then electric cars tend to be quite a lot of money. So it's important you choose the right one for you. And if you need some help with that, you should click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below to go to the CarWow Best 10 Electric Cars. While you're there, you can not only find out which is the right electric car for you, you can see whatever offers are available on a range of electric cars. You can even sell your current car through car wow before buying your next car through us as well now if you want to do all that at a later date you can just simply google help me car wow and we will help you choose your next car and sell your current car one of the good things about the id buzz being electric is that while it does look like a van you sit up high like a van you've got loads of space inside it and a massive boot like a van because it's based on an electric car and all the way is down low it actually drives more like a car it's not quite as agile as the other cars in this test because it is tall but compared to a normal more old-fashioned van it is much better the suspension's comfortable as well and being electric it's a lot quieter than a van the only thing you really notice is some wind whistle from those big door mirrors it's a really nice thing to drive i do like it if there is one thing that does annoy me about it and it's all modern Volkswagen electric cars. It's the infotainment system. It's just a little bit fiddly. I hate the way you have to use the climate through these sliders and this digital driver's display is really small. It doesn't quite display as much information as you might like. Other than that, I love the buzz. Right, we're gonna do a remaining range check. So far, I have done 20 miles and it's saying my remaining range is 191 miles and I've only got 84% of battery remaining. I haven't gone that far. It's not surprising though, this thing is using energy at 1.9 miles per kilowatt hour. That's pretty poor. Let's find out what the other cars are doing. So Mercedes, what are your stats? 84% of charge, 191 miles of range and 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour. Exactly the same range that I've got. Nissan? 93% of battery left, 223 miles of range and 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour. Audi? I've got 90% of battery left, 184 miles of range and 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour. Oh, that's got the least range at the moment. Tesla? Well, I am sat at 88%, which is giving me a range of 289 miles. I am currently consuming 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour. 
And Genesis? 90% battery remaining, 221 miles of range, consuming at 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. As part of this EV road trip, we're going to be stopping at service stations so I can switch into another car. Also, while I'm doing that, I thought I may as well just check out the charging infrastructure at the service stations. And here I am at Road Chef, Northampton, northbound, and there is just one charging unit with two spaces, though the connectors on the DC chargers, you've got two different types. So there's just one CCS on one Chadamo, which I also like to call Chodamo. That's rubbish. Now I've jumped into the Mercedes EQA. So this particular car has a single electric motor with 190 horsepower driving the front wheels and it's good for 0 to 60 in around eight seconds. And it definitely feels a little bit more nippy than the Volkswagen ID Buzz. I also think it feels a bit more expensive inside. We've got leatherette here on the door tops with stitching, which is all very nice. And the car is actually less expensive than the Buzz. It starts at 52,000 pounds and this is the entry level version. This is what you get for your 52,000 pounds. And it seems reasonably well equipped. I prefer the infotainment system than the one in the Volkswagen. The only complaint I have is that when it displays Android Auto it is smaller. I think you get a bigger screen if you have Apple. The rest of it though doesn't feel as special as the Volkswagen. It just seems like a normal GLA which is what this car is based on. It's not a bespoke electric car like all the other cars on test. You can get an internal combustion engine version which is the normal GLA. As a result it feels a little bit compromised. In some ways it feels a bit more expensive to drive than the Volkswagen because it's a bit like more substantial feeling. The suspension just seems a little bit more car-like, a little bit more planted. Though occasionally when you do hit some sharper bumps you do feel a bit of a jolt. One thing that I'm noticing though is it's quieter than the Volkswagen but that's because it's a slightly more streamlined shape. As a result you don't sit quite so high, you know it's just like a slightly tall hatchback really. Though the visibility is generally good and because the batteries are underneath the floor and it's based on a normal internal combustion engine car chassis you get this situation where the distance between the seat base and the floor is less than in the standard car so you feel like there's not enough under thigh support so it's not as comfy as it could be for longer distances it's also got the smallest boot out of all the cars here it's going to be okay for most people but if you need to carry a big load like some people do then it might not be quite practical enough by the way if you like these sort of EV range test videos make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on because we're going to be filming a really exciting one with some super hot electric cars which I think you're going to enjoy so make sure you're subscribed I'm at Welcome Break Leicester Forest East northbound and we've got one two three four electric charging bays taken up by ice cars why is that how are they getting away with it well there's a reason these are out of order they're not working because as this sign says due to site power limitations so they're going to power there's no charging I've now jumped into the Nissan and I've got to say I really really like this car it's one of my favorite looking electric cars and I love the interior as well I think it feels more expensive than the Mercedes with this Alcantara on this particular model I've got the design of the dash where you've got like this wood trim here with touch sensitive buttons there for the climate control but they are real buttons look they do work they're not actually poppy outy buttons but that's better than having to operate it through the screen and the screens I like the way they curve like that's really really nice plus I've got widescreen and Android Auto. Now this Nissan is actually less expensive than the Mercedes so the starting price is £46,000 so this one that I've got here is £54,000. For that you get the larger battery with 87 kilowatt hours capacity. That's good for a range in this car 310 miles. That's because it's got the big fancy wheels. If you get the smaller wheels you can get up to 330 miles of range out of the area. In terms of the performance it's got 242 horsepower. It does feel a little bit nippier and more responsive than the Mercedes though I think that it's not quite as quiet and I feel the bumps a little bit more in this but there's hardly anything in it and it's generally pretty decent to drive. There's certain things I really love about it like features such as this look the movable center console so you can have the armrest just where you want it and you've got all this space down here by your feet as well because this is a bespoke built from the ground up electric car unlike the Mercedes and so they've just been able to package it really really well. That said headroom's a little bit on the tight side so with this panoramic glass roof it does it into headspace and as a result look in the front if you're really tall you might find it a little bit close to your head same story in the backs of that sloping roof line most adults will be fine but very tall people might struggle a bit other than that it's comfy in the back the boot it's big enough for most people and it's the third biggest or third smallest out of the six cars I've got here today overall I think Nissan have done a great job with this Nissan area I prefer it than the Mercedes I'd still rather have the ID buzz just because it's got more character 
really with my sensible hat on i think this could be a slightly better car now what i've done is actually configured my favorite nissan aria using the car wag configurator and if you want to see what that is and the saving you can currently get on this car through car wag click on the pop out banner up there for the link in the description below now let's do another range check-in so this nissan has 72 percent of battery remaining we've got 182 miles of range ahead of us we're averaging 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour mercedes what are your numbers I have 59% battery, which is 139 miles of range, averaging 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. You're more efficient than this though. ID Buzz? I've got 58% battery left, which equals 131 miles of range, and it's currently doing 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour. It's really off the pace, isn't it? How about the Audi? The Audi has got 67% battery remaining, that equates to 160 miles of range, and I'm averaging 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. What about the Tesla? I'm currently sat at 71% battery, which gives me 231 miles of range, average of 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. And finally, the Genesis. The Genesis has 71% battery left, which is 171 miles, and it's averaging 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour. Hmm, so there we go. I'm at Nottingham Trial Services northbound. This actually has three bays, but this guy's parked like an idiot. And you've got some extra little AC chargers there if you're really stuck and these are taken as they are because of that guy's parking. Anyway, let's see if we can speak to this person here. Hi, right, how you doing? How you doing? You've got an e-tron, very nice car, e-tron GT. You. How are you finding your car? I have noticed the range drop in the winter. All right, how about charging? Do you struggle sometimes? Do you fight? find that someone's parked badly or honestly i do yeah so i do we stopped earlier on today and uh, a guy in his trailer had parked across them so it can be a bit problematic but Indeed. is this your first electric car it is and will you be going back to an ice car so i love old classic cars but in terms of day-to-day -day, daily driver I'll, I'll, uh, I'll stick to electric well there you go seems like a good plan to me i'm now driving the audi q4 sportback and it's a little bit more expensive than the nissan the range starts at fifty-two thousand pounds though this one sixty-four thousand pounds that's for two reasons you can get a single motor version that's rear wheel drive this is the dual motor version the 50 it has 300 horsepower it doesn't feel that much quicker than the nissan Area, even though the 0 to 60 time is a second quicker apparently does it in just over six seconds but when i put my foot down at these speeds it doesn't feel that much more responsive all audi q4s have a 77 kilowatt hour battery pack and in the case of this particular car i'm driving it should be able to do 312 miles as for the reality of driving it it's fairly nice it seems quieter than the nissan similar to the mercedes the suspension's a little bit more settled than in the nissan as well quite similar to the mercedes though one thing i have noticed with the mercedes is that that car's on a 18 inch alloy wheel so it's got some big thick tires which help absorb bumps whereas this is on 20s it's easily as comfortable as the mercedes despite having those bigger wheels with less tire sidewall so that's good for general driving yeah it's quite a nippy car it handles pretty well considering it's a taller vehicle as long as you raise your seat up you can get a decent view although i do think this windscreen is quite steeply raked so it doesn't feel so much suv like as more like more sporty still practical though so there's a decent amount of room in the back the sloping roofline does eat into headspace a bit but it's better than the nissan though remember that car did have a panoramic roof which makes things a little bit worse regardless the boot on this is bigger than the nissan's i do prefer the infotainment system in this than the nissan though i think it's just a little bit brighter the screen is and you've got physical buttons that you press rather than just touch sensitive ones i think the digital drive display is a little bit brighter and better as well it's a nice thing to drive i just think that the interior it's a little bit dark and miserable i quite like the design but i think the arrow is more interesting and the materials doesn't feel more expensive than the nissan either even though the actual list price is more i'm at welcome break Wardour services northbound and we've had some luck there's two empty electric charging bays over there with 50 kilowatt chargers and then there's four electric charging bays here with 180 kilowatt chargers and all the bays are empty it's not all bad when it comes to electric cars though there is one thing about these chargers i can't quite tell how much it costs per kilowatt hour maybe you have to plug your car in but i can't see it for pressing all these buttons no no idea i've now jumped into the genesis gv60 it's got a 77 kilowatt hour battery pack and this is the rear drive version with 229 horsepower and it should be capable of 321 miles not 60 it's supposed to take just under eight seconds though it feels a little bit quicker than that when you put your foot down it's quite responsive in fact the whole car feels 
a little bit more responsive than the others. The steering's just a little bit sharper. You sit a bit lower, I think, as well, so it feels a bit more hatchbacky and a bit more darty. I quite like the way it drives. It's sort of a midpoint between the slightly sporty feeling of the Kia EV6 and the softer, more relaxed approach of the Hyundai Ioniq 5. But it's not surprising, really, because Genesis is owned by Hyundai, so it shares the same underpinnings as those two cars. Just slight different in tuning. This car also shares its chassis with the Ioniq 6. Now, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below. What is different is the price. Genesis is more expensive. So it starts from £54,000, and that means it's the second most expensive starting price of all the cars in this test behind obviously the ID Buzz. This particular car is actually, as tested, the second most expensive after the Audi, because this one I've got here cost £63,000. To be honest with you though, it feels the most expensive on the inside. The materials are just a bit nicer, a bit posher than in all the other cars. And I love the Alcantara headlining, the light soft touch leather, the two-toed bodywork, the silvery bits here. Clever way that the gear selector rotates over when you start the car. It does feel a little bit special. Good infotainment system, good digital driver's display, separate climate controls. As for practicality, there's a decent amount of space in the back. Headroom might be a bit tight for people who are really tall. It's not too bad. Only slight issue is the boot is the second smallest here, but it's probably still going to be big enough for most people. I really, really do like it. It's got really cool little like touches like this here oh dear and all the safety kit in the world we're <laughs> looking down <laughs> fiddling with switches you shouldn't be that was a lane departure warning there i also like this feature as well when you indicate to change lanes a camera shows you what's in your blind spot that is really good do you know what so far out of all the cars i've driven this is my favorite to drive but it's still not my favorite to be in despite being the most luxurious that is still the quirky id buzz there's just something about it i love let's do another range check in the genesis has 51 percent of its battery remaining and that should give me a range of 122 miles. It's average 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour so far. How's the Nissan doing? The Nissan has 53% battery left, which means 142 miles of range, and it's currently averaging 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. Audi? 44% battery, 109 miles remaining, 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. What about the Mercedes? 36% battery, 85 miles of range, 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. Volkswagen? 33% battery, 74 miles left of range, 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour. Finally then, the Tesla. Go on, how much are you beating everyone by? So my battery is at 51%, 174 miles, 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour. Basically, I'm winning. You think you're winning, but you won't be winning for much longer because I've jumped into the Tesla and straight into a traffic jam. Now, I'm quite glad I'm in this car in a traffic jam because I've got auto steer. We've got navigate on autopilot. I think we've got a diversion coming up. So let's see if it will navigate me off at this junction. Uh, car, you should definitely be getting across. Sod it, let me just indicate myself. There we go, look, it's finding a space. It's also showing me what's in my blind spot. Oh, this is not happening here. The road is closed, Tesla. Knobhead. Yeah, I had to take over there to just not hit that cone. Anyway, let me tell you about this Tesla. It starts from £45,000. That's for the single motor version. This is the long range, and it's actually £53,000. But then you get two electric motors, one on each axle, so it's four-wheel drive. That means combined you have 384 horsepower, which is good for 0 to 16 under five seconds, and it really does feel quick when you put your foot down. I mean, it's just in another league. The battery capacity of the long range is 75 kilowatt hours, and that gives you a range, a claimed range, of 351 miles. That's with the 19-inch alloy wheels. We're rejoining the motorway now. I'm gonna see if it can actually join the motorway after descending the ramp. Let's see if it can do that on Navigate and Autopilot. It should be able to, and there's no traffic coming, so it'll be all right. Auto steers aborting. Shut up! So it's asking to change lane, use indicator to confirm. Go on, apply slight turning force, there we go. It's done that and it's going up and it's going all across. What's it doing? It just went across two lanes like a nutter. Let's ignore the cruise control. If you just use it basic, it's generally fine. When it tries to do cleverer stuff, it's not as clever as you hope it would be. As for the rest of the driving experience, well, the thing about the Tesla is it's got a really low dash, so the viewfold is brilliant. The view at the back is 
awful, though you can always just go, oh hello, let's use the camera instead. And it does that thing like the Genesis where you can see in your blind spot. It's not the quietest car here. I think the Genesis is quieter, but it's similar to some of the other cars. One thing I do notice with it is that the suspension is a little bit on the firm side. When I first drove the Tesla Model Y, it was overly firm, but it's like they've made it a bit softer, which is better. One thing I do find a bit odd though is the steering. It's just a little bit too fast for a car like this. It's almost got sports car steering, but then the rest of the car just can't back up the initial promise. It is still a relatively tall car. In terms of the practicality, yeah, there's loads of room in this car. Decent amount of space in the back. It's got the second largest boot here, and it's got a nice big boot under the bonnet as well. The interior, people complain about Tesla built quality. It's fine, if you ask me. I like the fact it's minimalist. This screen, it's not great having to look over here for the speed. I wish I had a heads up display, but really once you're used to the whole system and how it works, it's actually quite good. And most things you just control with voice commands that actually do what you tell them to. So turn off windscreen wipers. Oh, you let me down. It even wrote what I said. Turn off windscreen wipers. It says wipers off and they're still on. What the f... Let's do a bit more um, autopilot. Request lane change to follow route. Yes. There we go. Let's change lane. Do it. Do it. Do it. It's doing it. We had success with changing lane and navigate on autopilot. Let's do another range check-in. This Tesla has 39% of the battery remaining and that equals 128 miles of range. I've done an average energy consumption of 257 watt hours per mile, which equates to 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. Nissan, what are your numbers? 38% battery left, which equals 99 miles of range, averaging 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. Audi? 28% of battery remaining, 67 miles of range, 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. Mercedes? 18% of battery, 42 miles of range, and 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. I think the Mercedes might be leaving the motorway first and going to find the nearest charging station. Volkswagen? Things are looking a little gloomier here. Oh. I have 15% battery, 30 miles of range, 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour. And at 20%, I've had a low battery warning flash up and the um, sat nav's offered to find me somewhere to recharge. Unfortunately, you're going to have to ignore that for now and press on until it actually runs out of battery. The Volkswagen's definitely going to have to leave first and it'll probably be closely followed behind by the Mercedes. What's the Genesis doing? 34% of battery, which is giving me 77 miles, 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour. Ooh, okay, so the Genesis is definitely the most efficient of the rest. Anyway, let's press on. See how far we can all get. God, this is boring. I've got so much further to go, like 113. This is the ID, Buzz. I'm definitely going to have to come off at the next junction. I've just had a warning. Battery's down to 10%. So I've still got 20 miles of range. Actually, I take it all back. Things have just got exciting for the ID, Buzz, at least. I have to leave at the next junction. We've done 178 miles, and already the ID, Buzz, is having to peel off. Okay, then, Buzz, this is you. Good luck. Wish you all the best. See ya. It's one down. Do you know what? I'm starting to get a little bit cold. I am. I wish I could put the blooming heated seat on. Hi, Matt. This is the Mercedes. Uh, I am down to 7% of battery and only 16 miles of range. I've just had a warning encouraging me to find my nearest charger. So I think I'm going to get off at the next junction. Okay. If that's what you've got to do, that is what you have got to do. So I'll let you leave now and um, wish you the best. Bye bye, Mercedes. I'm going to do another range check now. The Tesla's got 26% of its battery remaining, which it thinks is worth 85 miles of range, 260 watt hours per mile, which is 3.8 miles per kilowatt hour. It's gone down a little bit. What is the Nissan doing? 21% battery, 54 miles, 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. Genesis? Sat here with 19% battery, 41 miles, and I'm averaging 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour. And finally then, Audi. 11% battery remaining, 24 miles of range, 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. Have you had any warnings yet? Because that's quite low. I've got a red charge bar now, and I've got a warning saying that I need to find a charger. There's a junction coming up here, Audi. Are you going to have to leave here? Yeah, this is goodbye. Goodbye, Audi. Sorry to see you leave. So far, we've done 231 miles. The Tesla has 16% of battery remaining and 51 miles. It's averaged 257 watt hours per mile, which is 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. What's the GV60 saying? Things aren't so rosy for me here. I'm at 6% battery, 16 miles of range, 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour. I'm gonna find a junction in a 
seven or eight miles and have to peel off. What's happening in the Nissan? 9% battery and it has a 22 mile range, 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. When the battery hit 10%, a warning came up saying battery's too low. It will stay on the A1M because I've got 19 miles left, so it's fine. I'm actually going to leave at the next junction as well because I found a charger that's quite a few miles away, but I need to go same direction as the Genesis actually and the Nissan is just going to stay on this road because he's found a charger that is within his range and the idea is that we'll get near our chargers and then circle like sharks until the cars run out of battery. So Nissan I can see you disappearing into the distance as you go your own way as Fleetwood Mac said. Some time later. Yeah so that was my exit looks like I'm pushing some boundaries. Oh my God, he accidentally missed his lumin exit. I guess what you can do is take the next exit and then double back on yourself to get near that charger. You might just about have enough range for it. Thank you very much for adding some extra jeopardy into this video. <laughs> You're ever so welcome. <laughs> Rather him than me. Are you leaving on this junction, Genesis? I am indeed. See you all later on the other side. Good luck. Good luck to you too. Hopefully you'll make it, though maybe you won't. <laughs> I've got the cruise back on, letting the car do its thing. That's interesting as well. Look, I've actually got a call coming in. Hi, Matt. It's Paul in the VW ID Buzz. Ah, OK. You're the first to fall. It, it, it's run out, hasn't it? Yeah, it stopped. It did 203, nine of which were after it was down to 0% battery and zero miles of range. The ID Buzz averaged 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour. And what happened when it broke down? It had been telling me for a little while I needed to charge it, and then suddenly all the uh, mood lighting went red, which was a nice touch. And at that moment, a big flashing light on the dashboard came up and said that it was into manoeuvre mode only, charge immediately. Right, well, that's that done. I'll leave you to it. Can you get it to a charging station? Is it charging? Just ended up slightly too far away to get it back to the <laughs> charging point. <laughs> Okay, all right. Well, good luck anyway. Oh, that's interesting. A little notice has just flagged up for me to stay below 60 miles an hour to make sure I get to my destination. Though it is saying down here, look, it's 31 miles to the destination and I'll arrive with no battery, even though the actual range is saying that I've still got 35 miles of range left. It's a bit confusing. Oh, here's another one. Hello, who's that? It's Darren in the Mercedes. You've run out of battery, haven't you? I did about 10 miles on zero and got to 208 miles overall. Averaged 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. I spent about 45 minutes driving around in circles in a car park and then <laughs> it all just cut out and I rolled to a stop. I can see the charger just out of reach. <laughs> After all that driving around yep. in circles. Well, there's a guy who's been watching me for quite a while from his flat window, so... Uh, if he isn't calling the police, he might come down and give me a hand. Or he might come down and mug you. <laughs> yeah, there is that too. Well, good luck getting a charge. Thanks very much. Mercedes just about beat the Volkswagen. Which one's going to be the next to fall? I've been cruising along at 70 and I've now noticed the remaining range is 16 miles, which is exactly the same as the distance to the charging location. So I'm going to do what the car said and actually drop my speed below 60 because at this rate, the remaining range is going to go away quicker than the remaining miles to go. And I don't want to be left stranded on the dual carriageway. The destination is 5.3 miles away. That's where the charger is. To get off this dual carriageway, it's 4.8 miles, but I've only got two miles of range left. It's going down so quickly. I'm backing off. I'm going to go under 50 now. Squeaky bum time. Oh, this hill is not a good thing. Come on, we're at no miles of range. It's empty, though it's not quite empty. There's some secret charge left in there. I've got three miles of secret charge. Hopefully we're at the top of the hill as well and I can start coasting down it. There's a lot less performance. Now I've experienced this before actually because I've done a range test in a Tesla Model 3. It's feeling as responsive as that car did when it just about ran out. Right, we've got a mile. Come on, Tesla. I just need to get off here. Here's the junction coming up now. Come on. Okay, I've pulled into a little village where we can drive around in circles. Oh, and it's got a pizza place as well. Winning. I've come quite a long way from the charge of 2.2 miles, so now I've got to try and get back to it. Hopefully the coal will hold out until then. Oh, it's a phone call. Hi Matt, how are you doing? It's Jack in the Audi. Have you stopped? Yes, I've stopped within two metres of a fast charger, but the cable won't reach. 
<laughs> What's happened to the car? Is it like locked itself? Can't you push it? It can be put in neutral when someone's in the driver's seat, but as soon as I get out, I can't push it. But at least I'm in a charging bay. How many miles did the car do? 235 miles. How many miles did it do on zero battery? I'm asking for a friend because it, it doesn't affect me right now. It did uh, 11 miles. So plenty to play with there. And what was the overall energy consumption for the entire journey? 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. That's fairly decent. Anyway, I'm going to leave you to try and find someone to help you push. Good luck. Okay, so we've got a bit of a problematic development here. I was on the phone then, wasn't concentrating. I took a wrong turn. It's five miles to the charging station and I can really feel that I've lost a lot more performance. I'm going to do these miles slow. This car clocked over onto zero battery at 275 miles. I'm at 283 and I've got 3.7 to get back to the charge point. A bit of roadworks here where it's single file traffic so if I don't make it through here that could be really problematic. Come on make it through here. Now is not the time to die because this looks like a bridge oh we're going up another hill it's even got the name hawk hill how long is this hill gonna go on for oh it's down to 20 miles an hour i can see down the hill come on oh no it goes up again oh battery charge charge now pull over safely i found somewhere i'm gonna dip in here i've had to pull into a farmer's field <laughs> fortunately farmer's field entrance to it i was able to pull off that road i'd like one mile away from the charger electrical system is enabled to support all features all right hopefully it will support the trip computer so in total the tesla did 285 miles so 10 miles were where it said zero percent battery average energy consumption over the journey 255 watt hours per mile which is 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour so i'm stuck in a farmer's field what am i to do I know, I'm going to call the AA. We're gonna need a low loader to come and rescue me. This car can't be towed because look at this. If I go into service, I can't just be towed, I need to be lifted. So I need a flatbed. Now I'm gonna just find out what's happened to the Genesis, see if he's run out of electricity yet. I would phone using Bluetooth, but I can't because it's actually reducing what function I can use in the car and it wasn't connecting to the Bluetooth anymore. So I'll do it with my phone. Hello. Hello Genesis, how's it going? Good. I think I've won. Why do you think you've won? What's happened? I picked my EV sat nav to take me to my local charging station. And when I got there, there was a fence and no charging station. <laughs> but I found a petrol station with a charging port 4.7 miles away. And I said, I'm going for it. So I drove. And by the time I was peeling off, my foot was to the floor and there was nothing left. I rolled into the forecourt, managed to loop it round. And I reversed back with nothing left and i'm sat in my charging bay now but it's not a fast charger so i'm waiting two hours 20 minutes to 100 percent. but you are so lucky to have made it to a charger i'm stuck in a farmer's field waiting for a breakdown <laughs> recovery so how many miles did the genesis do before it conked out 253.3 miles and how many of those miles were when it was saying it had no battery left 10 about the same as me. And what was the average energy consumption over the entire journey? 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour. That's quite good. Not quite as good as a Tesla, but good nonetheless. Anyway, I'll let yeah. you enjoy having your car charged while I sit here waiting to be rescued. Right, it looks like the recovery truck has arrived. I thought I was doing the right thing by getting off the road. Can we do anything? Can we push it out? So I had this vision, right, that what I could do is like, pull over, stayed away, made space there so that like a recovery truck could if it needed to get down in front of me. But it seems like it was the wrong thing to do. Yeah. This is interesting. It's just popped up low voltage energy remaining. After that, I'm going to have to start using the um, the manual release for the doors and stuff. We don't want that to go too low. Look, it tells you what to do. Open doors manually, your vehicle loses all electrical power. Oh, got a phone call. Hello, that must be the Nissan. No, it is indeed, yes. How far have you gone? 267.1 miles. Yes, the Tesla wins then. How many of those miles did you do with zero battery left? 8.2 miles. We're all doing about the same, around 10 miles almost, like with no battery left. What was your average yeah. energy consumption over the entire journey? 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. And what happened when it ran out? Everything's still switched on and I can use everything inside, but I just now have so little power that I can't even get up 
the, the tiniest ramp out of the car park. Are you near a charger? I'm near a charger. I reckon I can just get this guy over here to help me push it the last couple of feet and then we'll we'll be good, to be honest. All right, and see you soon. So we've had a bit of a development. The AA tried to fit the towing eye to the mount at the rear, but apparently there's no thread in it, so you can't screw it in. Did they forget to like thread it or something at the factory? <sighs> Well, it appears that the AI have managed to get the low loader down into the field. They've got a workaround for the lack of um, place for the towing eye. They've just mounted a rope to the chassis and one of the strong points on the car, so it should be fine. And then they're just going to winch me onto the flatbed and we should be good. What I'm going to do as a precaution is lower a window so that if the exterior doors, which are electrically operated, don't work anymore, I can reach in and use the manual release inside. Hey, yeah, could you put it in transport mode for me, please? Okay, sure. So service, towing, transport mode. There we go. It's ready for you. That's it, isn't it? Yeah, turn the steering wheel around. I'm not being very helpful, am I? Oh, it's no power steering. <laughs> oh, it's like being put up oh, bloody hell. <laughs> Obviously, I ran out of charge on purpose. This is not what would normally happen. I wouldn't do this. I've driven many a Tesla and never actually run out of battery power when I've been trying not to run out of battery power. But it does go to show if you're a complete idiot and get it completely wrong and you do run out, there are people who can help you. Just like with any car, really. You know, if I didn't fill it up with fuel and I just kept on driving like an idiot. Same level of shame. 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 You see when you're happy you get up? I'm quite happy here. Am I allowed to travel like this? <laughs> Unfortunately, you cannot. Oh, okay. I don't have to walk behind, do I? No. Okay, right. I like giving me truck. Oh, okay, let's go in your truck. <laughs> I'm nice and comfy in the big AA recovery truck. Ben's driving, my hero. So if you can take me to the charging station, that would be brilliant. No problem. All's good. We've got the car dropped off at a charger and it's rapid charging. Now, if you'd like to watch another video where we range test some EVs with the longest range of all EVs on sale, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below. If not, I'm going to give you the score on these cars. So, the one that went the shortest distance was the Volkswagen ID Buzz. It did 203 miles, which is 80% of its claimed range. And it averaged over the journey and energy consumption of 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour. Next was the Mercedes. It did 208 miles, which is 79% of its claimed range with an average energy consumption of 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. Then there was the Audi. It did 235 miles, which is 75% of its claimed range with an average energy consumption of 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. In third place was the Genesis GV60. It did 253 miles, which is 79% of its claimed range and an average energy consumption of 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour. In second place was the Nissan Aria. It did 267 miles, which is 86% of its claimed range, and it averaged 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. But the winner and the car which went the longest distance was a Tesla Model Y long range. It managed 285 miles, which is 81% of its claimed range, with an average energy consumption of 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. It's now charging at 191 kilowatts and it'll be fully charged in about an hour. Once it's done that, I'm gonna get back in it and drive five miles all the way home to bed. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know which of these cars you think performed the best in the comments below. Click on those windows there for some more videos and on that box there to go to CarWow to see my list of the top 10 best electric cars on sale and what savings you can make on them through CarWow. Thanks for watching.